Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Tuesday the 3rd of November and the weekly market update. Coming off one of the best Octobers in four to five years, the German DAX has pushed to its highest levels um, in quite a few months. The S&P 500 has pushed to its highest levels since August and though the German DAX remains well off its August highs, it is approaching some very key confluence levels. On the top side, the S&P 500 is back above its 200-day moving average, as is the Dow. And I think the question being posed now as we head into a very, very big week for economic data, particularly US economic data, is whether or not we're going to see further gains in US equity markets, back to the all-time highs that we saw earlier this year. But also, I think, whether or not we're going to post a move back through the 11,000 level in the DAX after a very, very strong rally seen in October. So the key factors that I'm going to be looking at this week are going to be the US employment report, which is due out on Friday. That's going to be closely monitored in the wake of last week's very hawkish Fed statement that caught an awful lot of people by surprise, including me. So really it does throw into question my expectation that we won't see a rate hike this year. Um, you know, it's now a 50-50 bet on the Fed funds rate, WIRP on Bloomberg. Going to have a look at cable in that context and also going to be having a look at the Kiwi dollar where I think there's a very, very good potential breakout pattern starting to form on the top side. So as we can see from this daily chart on the S&P 500, we've broken above the 200 day moving average at the end of last month and thus far we've managed to hold above it. Currently we're testing the August highs around about 21.12. I think that that's going to remain the next key resistance level on the top side. But on the downside, really looking at around about the 20.65 area, we haven't as yet been below that since we broke above it around about the middle to end of October. And that's going to remain, I think, for me, the key support on the downside. It's pretty much an identical story on the Dow. Jones, I won't show you that because essentially the, the two benchmarks are exactly the same, 200 day moving average on the downside and support around, and, and resistance rather, around about the 18,000 level. Now the German, Germany 30 is I think the key chart that I really want you to look at because that is becoming a very interesting chart. We can see from this daily chart that I've put up in front of you that we're coming to a confluence of resistance levels. Not only are we coming near to the 200 day moving average, which we've been below since the middle of August, and I think that's likely to act as a significant resistance level, but we're also coming into trendline resistance from the April highs as well, which comes in round about the 11,160 level. So we've got the 200 day moving average at 11,065. We've got the trendline resistance coming in from 11,165, and then we've got the 61.8 Fibonacci retracement level from the April highs to the lows that we saw in September, which comes in at 11,210. So between 11,060 and 11,210, we've got a very strong area of resistance on the top side, which needs to be overcome to, I think, give a clear indication that we've got potential further upside in the DAX back towards the 12,000 level that we saw in mid-July and at the beginning of August. Now we're going to move on to cable. Now cable's been trading in a pretty much a sideways range for a good part of the last three months. It's fairly well supported from trendline support from the April lows. Currently comes in around about 152, 152.10. But on the top side, it's running into a significant barrier of resistance at the 100 day moving average as well as that trend line support that I've, trend line resistance rather, that I've drawn in from the highs that we saw at the end of August. They come in round about the same sort of levels. So I think for further upside, we really need to see a move through 155.10. Now a lot of that will depend on what comes out from Thursday's Bank of England rate meeting and the inflation report and the future growth forecasts from that quarterly inflation report because I think when you actually look at what UK data has done relative to US data, it's actually been that much better. And I think depending on how hawkish or how dovish the Bank of England is 
in its quarterly summary could dictate where the pound goes to next. My bias, I think, remains for not much sterling weakness in the short term, which would mean that I wouldn't expect to see a move below 152 over the course of the next few trading sessions. Of course, that will also depend on Friday's US payrolls report and expectations there are fairly high in the context of the number of job gains that we're expected to see out of the US. 180,000 is the benchmark that's currently being priced in. I think given the fact that we've seen 142 and 136 in the previous two months, 180 may be pushing it and we will, I think we could potentially be lucky to see 150. If we get a weak number, that could be dollar negative, could well underpin the pound as well. And we will be hosting our weekly, or not our weekly, our monthly non-farm payrolls webinar on Friday at 1.15, me and Colin. So please feel free to tune into that where Colin and I will dissect some of the key chart points and the data as well in the wake of the release. I'm going to finish up with Kiwi Dollar. Kiwi has enjoyed a significant rebound in the past few weeks on the back of slightly firmer commodity prices, slightly firmer milk prices, does appear to be running into a little bit of resistance and that's borne out by this particular four hour chart that I'm putting in front of you right now. We've broken towards the downside, we've broken below that key support line from the lows that we saw in September, but the key support level remains at 66.20. It coincides with the lows that we saw in the week beginning the 12th of October and the week around the 26th of October. If we break below that 66.20 level, then we could well see further Kiwi weakness. So that concludes this week's weekly video. Just remains for me to remind you about Friday's webinar with me and Colin at 1.15. Otherwise, until next week, this is Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.